Hello, One Piece Nation here today to bring you my review for Boruto the movie. This review will contain spoilers, so if you had not seen Boruto the movie, go watch it, and then come back and watch this video. The first thing I will talk about is the character usage in this movie. So, in my personal opinion, it was really good character usage for Kishimoto. Because, of course, Kishimoto didn't use, like, any of his characters. By the end of the series, he was barely using Sakura and Kakashi, who were both main characters. It was really all Naruto and Sasuke. Well, this movie focused on Boruto, Naruto, Sasuke, and a couple of other characters. But, however, I was disappointed due to the fact that we didn't get a lot of Serata in this movie. Like, she... She was there, because she's on Boruto's team. But after all that time and guidance spent building up her character and developing it, and making her one of my favorite characters in all of Naruto, I love Serata's character. I think it's, hand down, Kishimoto's, at least in his top three, best written female character. That, without a doubt, is undeniable. She is so much better than any other character, and actually one of his most well-written characters, probably in his top, like, 20 written characters in general. Not in his top 10, but she just, she's a really well-written character, and you could could have done a lot more with her, especially being Sasuke's child. You could have done a lot more with that, but I understand why he didn't. He had just done a ten a chan a ten chapter story about Serata. Completely dedicated to Serata. And it was nice. And it is very obvious that she is stronger than both of her parents at that age. And the same for Boruto. That is very obvious. Be even in Gaiden that was obvious. I you got a glimpse of it in Gaiden about the power of this generation. Because, you know, you saw Serata was able to pull off a technique, pull off that, what a Sakura technique, that Sakura mastered around age 15, in between the time skip. So you could say maybe 14, 15, she mastered it at one of those two ages. Serata's like, what, like, not even 13? 13 at the most? And she already has mastery of this jitsu. I mean, it says a lot about her generation. And in this movie, it confirms my suspicion. This generation is very skilled. There are, a, you know, especially Serata and Boruto. Definitely them. I feel like Boruto had more, is it maybe had, may have a little bit more skill, just because he'd been trained, obviously, by, even when he was younger, he probably got a little bit of instruction from Naruto. You know, before Naruto was Okage. He know he just, his father's there, so I'm assuming he's had at least one training session with him. Serata probably never trained with Sasuke. I'm surprised he can turn her shining on on and off. You know, in general. But, yeah, so, I was a little bit disappointed with it, but I understood it. Now, we got to see the other kids, the new the other children of all the main characters. It could have been better. We could have gotten more screen time with them, but it was fine. A lot of it was dedicated to, you know, Boruto's relationship with some of the main characters. Now, well, I had this scene imagined in my head. And especially with the setup of the movie, they could have done it. The act we know, Boruto was training with Sasuke. So, a good point. So, I had this scene in my head where he went over to, a, you know, the house of Sasuke thing and and, you know, Sakura went through the door, and somehow, the, the, and I, I thought it would have been hilarious if, you know, like, Sakura told him something and he had cut out. I thought, you know, did he tell us? And then at the end of the movie, he just mentioned, oh, Dad, I know who your first kiss is. That would have been hilarious. Like, you know, Sakura told me who your first kiss was. Like, that would have been hilarious. Like, I, I, I was waiting the entire movie for a joke about the fact that Naruto and Sake kissed each other in part one. I was waiting just for a scene so I could see everybody laugh at them. It, it would have been hilarious. But they didn't do it. But 
Yeah, but they're one, you fit the type of the older characters because, you know, they were like, they, because they're but they're but adults. They're but Joni, Proctor, the but tuning is in. They're the one defending Medilli. But you know what? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about when the Dillig was attacked during the tuning exam. And as you can see, I'm kind of scattered this review. You know, I'm just talking about the things that I liked in the movie and the things that I didn't like later. Now, the scene and this whole entire battle when Mama Chiki, or Momo Chiki, however you want to pronounce it, attacked the tuning exam arena was done amazingly. It was also good because it was the most used character part of the movie. The character the part of the movie when the most characters were used. Literally almost every character was used because they all the ninjas had to evacuate the civilians. So yeah, we got to see that. Um uh actually, funny story about that. Ironically the part that got the most hype that wasn't obviously a Naruto or Sake scene in the theater I was in was actually the Sakura scene when she broke that piece of rubble. Which, I'm not sure why people freaked out over that, considering the boulder that she destroyed in the beginning of Shippuden was like at least 10 times the size of that piece of debris. But people seem to think, you know, seeing something we know a character is capable of doing, seeing them do it. Apparently, people in my theater thought that was interesting. I don't know why. But it was a nice scene. Very well done. Uh, you know, that was really the only memorable scene. Because that was really the only scene when a character actually did something. It was more like Kishimoto's nod, like, you know. You were like, oh, for, like, you know, main character of the series did, did, needs to do something. So, uh, here you go. Destroy a boulder. Destroy some debris. It was something like that. Because... It was quite clear that, you know, nobody else was really going to be involved. The only other people that had major roles in that scene besides Sakura were the five Kage. Because Naruto was already down below, and, you know, talk that he was having that argument with Boruto, which I'm going to talk about later. But, and then the rest of the Kage jump into action and try to save as many people as possible. And, by the way, I, I'm not even joking. When we first saw Gara, there were there were comments in my theater. You could hear people commenting on how bad his hair is, on how stupid he looked with that hair. I am just saying, nobody mentioned Naruto's hair because people are kind of accepted it eventually. But when people saw Gara's hair, they were like, "No, no, that hair is bad. It looks so dumb." But whatever. But so what happened was that they continued to fight. And then Naruto and Sasuke got involved, and were probably arguably one of my favorite day scenes in the movie, and a home in to Dragon Ball Z, if you really think about it. Let's talk about that now. Now, I actually thought of this when I first saw the scene of Naruto shielding Boruto, and Boruto yelling "Dad" in the trailer. The first thing I thought of was. This is Kichimoto paying homage to the Piccolo protect Gohan scene. It's incredibly obvious because, you know, he's protecting Boruto from an attack with his arms spread in the air, all of it. It's clear as day. The position is obviously different. His hands are above his head instead of, you know, spread out like in a straight line on his side. Because obviously he doesn't want to copy the scene directly. Otherwise people will just say rip off of the Piccolo protect Gohan scene. He wants to make it obvious what it is. It's a tribute, a homage in a way. And also, it fits with the story. But, so, Naruto and Sasuke are defending the village with everything they've got. Sasuke even enters, Naruto enters, uh, makes all these shadow clones, and they all enter, um, they all enter Kurama mode, you know, the tail beast mode. Sasuke enters Susano, and they start fighting the things off. Well, Sake actually, no, he doesn't enter Susano. Sake just kind of stands back. Because Sake, for some reason, actually doesn't enter Susano right away. I don't actually know why he didn't. I think and maybe it was some kind of thing like, oh, Naruto Bokage, or maybe he was just trying to absorb what's going on. I, because I don't remember him entering Susano. And I remember all the Naruto and Sake fight names. But 
what happened did is that it's amazing though. So the, the main villain, Momochiki, creates this so he has the ability to absorb jitsu. So he he literally cre and early in the movie then but a tail had been captured and fired a tail beef bomb. So he was able to just create a tail beef bomb. Like a gigantic D B Z level like D B Z shit. It was, it was gigantic. It was it was like it was like it was the size of the entire stadium and it was going to kill everybody. So Sake you know they like covered the head of the QB in uh with with Uster Seno and you know, he throws it and Naruto gets him and you have to see it one where Serata falls to her knees and her Serata obviously is that I like this because it made, it reminded this thing which he fell to her knees and was just like horrified. It reminded me of two things actually, each of which her parents were directly involved in. The first thing I thought of was um when Sakura, you know, came out of Kostunu after Pain destroyed the village and was in total shock at the amount of power Pain had and what he had done. And the and the more prominent ones that I think other people may be connecting to, but when Scott when when they were fighting God with us, and Scott did commit was, was thinking about like taking his own life because he was so terrified of God with us, because he couldn't comprehend the power of a Joni. You have to realize this girl is seeing something much 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 greater than that, so it really makes sense for her to be in complete shock, and I liked it. Because, you know, most of the time, like, at her age, you're thinking, oh, Joni, are the, the Hokage and the Joni, those are the best, the Kage and the Joni. But now, no, like, this is different. Like, this, this is the kind of thing Kakashi and Sakura had to see during the war. Like, you were actually were in the war a couple things when Kakashi and Sakura just stood there, like, in complete shock with the things Naruto and Sasuke were doing. At the amount of power they were displaying, it was absolutely ridiculous. But then again, we know how ridiculous that was. But so yeah, so Naruto gets up in front of Boruto, and he takes the blow, and he and he you know he takes the blow, and he gets captured. Boruto wakes up in the hospital, and you know so he runs out of the hospital. He's injured. He gets up. And he's walking around. People are telling him that you know, get back in bed. And he's like, where's my sister? And he walks into the area next to him. He, you know, everybody had been transferred there. And he walks into like, the room next to him. And Sakura is killing Hinata, who had been injured. And Himawari is, of course, freaking out. Him, because Himawari is like four. I mean, Himawari is scared, scared as hell. But, you know, she, the... Uh, you know, I don't think I don't really think I need to explain what happened. You know, in later in this name, but I'll go over it anyway. He he asked uh, the first thing he said is, "Will he?" He just looked at Doctor and he said, "He he literally did not." I don't even remember him asking. I think he just looked at Doctor and he was like, "Is he going to live?" Like you know, he uh, like it was kind of like one of those things that were kind of like um one of those unspoken questions. It's like it's kind of obvious what he wants to know. So Doctor was just like, "He'll be fine." She just you know. Injured. <laughs> and then he later on and goes to, uh, so he goes back to his house. He throws the thing on the ground. And, you know, he, he, he does that. He then, he goes, he, he starts, he doesn't even go back to his house. He starts running around and he bumps into Sasuke. Now that I, and he bumps into Sasuke, who he had, who had been training him earlier in the movie. But I've been waiting to talk about that because I'm gonna go on about that for a while because I loved it. The first day in which Sake meets Boruto is hilarious. Because Boruto is annoyed that Naruto hasn't arrived for Himawari birthday party yet. So he runs to the door, Sake opens and it gets just opens it up and goes to punch him. Sake grabs his fist and everybody in my theater was just like, Okay, the got the kid's dead. Sake can kill him now. Like did you know, Basake we remember, Basake from when they were kids or during the war, would have would have cut the kid's head off. He would have been like, Let me hear you little brat, don't annoy me. I mean 
you know, this is this is a, this was a different sake, a kinder, more like less violent sake. But so, you know, because sake is an asshole, he just looks right at he he not says like, how can I help you? He's like, is your husband here? Is Naruto here? And she's like, no. He's like, bye. And he just leaves. But then he Boruto um says, wait. And Boruto says to him, you're Sake Uchiha, right? You're the only man that can rival my dad in power. And so yeah, so what happens is Sake leaves, and um, Boruto just Boruto's annoyed, and he goes to his room, right? And while he's walking around, he sees Naruto's jacket, and he throws it out of the window. You know, Naruto's old Genny jacket. He's like, stupid old man, you're so uncool. And he just throws it out the window. But then, later on in the movie, you see Boruto is walking through and just running along the street, right? He's just running along the street. And what happens is, I'm not even kidding you, he sees Sasuke. And he charges Sasuke. And this is one of the funniest things in the movie, in my opinion. But I'll talk about one of my, my, com- my comedy later. But so Sasuke just disappeared and just Boruto just falls and he just like punches Boruto in the gut. He like he, he humiliates Boruto. And he's like, you're the only one that can rival my dad in power. And he demands that Sasuke become his master. However, it doesn't work. Sasuke said, can you do a Sengun? He said no. And he's like, well then you're not worth my time. And he leaves. He said, if you can master the Rasengan, gun, you can be my student. So, so Boruto then goes to come to his sensei, Kormahamaru, who, as we know from the pain arc, has mastered the Rasengan. gun. And he asks Kormahamaru to teach him the Rasengan. gun. And Kormahamaru is just like, you know, a reluctantly agrees. And when I say reluctantly, I mean it because it's like he does this at like 12 o'clock, 2 in the morning. So, like, two in the morning, he's at the Komahamaru without, like, teach me the Rasen gun. So, they start trying to learn it, right? And he can't do it. So, you know what he does? Actually, no, he can't. He makes a very small Rasen gun. So, what happens is, he masters the Rasen gun over a course of, like, a day or two, but it's very, very small. And what happens is, is that he goes to Sasuke, and he's like, Sasuke, look, I can do the Rasen gun. And he's going... And he's like, and he's like, kid, that's small. Your father was ten times bigger at that age. And then, in his annoyance, he threw it. And Sake looked at the tree, which was damaged. And, you know, Boruto's like, ah, and then he leaves. Because, you know, Sake, he's like, he thinks Sake saying it's small is his way of saying no, which it isn't. And he even comments, you know. He just, he's so impatient, like his father. But, so, Boruto's leaving, and what happens later on is, later on, Boruto ends up meeting up with Sake, and Sake tells him, you're my student, we're gonna start training. So they start training, and he does a, one of my, one of the things Sake does, is so while they're training, he, um, what he did, what he does is he took, um, he taught, he taught him the, uh, shadow shuriken jitsu or something. He threw, you know, they were trying to work on throwing a shuriken and making it curve and hit a target that was really far away. And Boruto was mastering it. He was able to hit a couple targets, make them go around trees and hit a target. But then he made, he said, you need to hit it in, like, a loop or something. And he was like, how can I do that? So Sake took two shuriken, threw them. And one of the shuriken bounced off the other shuriken and hit on point. And Boruto made a, a really ignorant comment here. He said, of course you'd be good at it. Why don't you teach this to Sarada? This is one of the Uchiha clan specialties, right? And he's like, by that, and he's like, Boruto, how many shadow clones can you make? And Boruto's like, around four. And he's like, by your logic, this would be your specialty. He raises one finger and creates, like, ten shadow bones. And he's like, your father can make one thousand, sh- can make over one thousand shadow bones. And of course, Boruto's just like, one thousand. He's like, I know my old man is strong. 
But so they keep they keep on training, and you know that they see the relationship develop, and it's really a nice touching thing. And then we get to the interesting part. We get to the tuning advance when it arrives. So yeah, let's talk about that. Also, I forgot to mention, he also has scientific ninja tools that he uses to make try to trick Sake into thinking he can do a Rasengan that is the same size of his father's Rasengan at his age. After Boruto passed, the first stage of a tuning exam, which was a very simple and basic test, and you know, I don't really need to talk about it because it was really just there so we could see how bad the father Naruto is. So, Shikamaru brings it up to Naruto, and he's like, and this is a really big deal, what happened here. But, so, Shikamaru brings it up, and he's like, why, why, you came all the way here to tell me this? That's exactly what Naruto said to Shikamaru, when, after Shikamaru said, your son passed. And he said, yes, because it's important, Naruto. And Naruto sat there for a minute, and you know what he did? He got on his, on his computer, and he emailed Boruto. He emailed his son, congratulations on passing the first stage. He said, congratulations, I'm proud of you. You know, he said it, but, and Boruto reads it, and Boruto's like, screw off. He like, screw off. You, you said you can congratulate me via email? Well, screw you. So, what happens is, is that, what happens is, is that they live, they go on to the second stage of the tuning exam. Which is when things start getting weird. At least in the eyes of the people observing the exam. This part of the exam is very simple. Capture a specific flag, you know, before the enemy team. So, while Boruto, so they, the team of Mitsuki, Shirata, and Boruto split up, and, well, I wasn't a, a huge fan of it, because I would have liked to, to see them working together, but I see why he did it. Because what happened was, was that Serato was going for the flag, and there were hundreds of other white flags that they were using Genjutsu to make you see. Serato was able to get around that with her shotting gun, which I guess she mastered turning it on and off. I, I mean, Kakashi could have taught her, I guess. I just... She seems to have mastery over Take One Shining on, which doesn't make a lot of sense because it appears not a lot of time has passed since Gaiden. So, but whatever. It's not supposed to make sense, I guess. But what happened was, was that, so Boruto starts getting double teamed by these three guys, and he makes shadow clones, and he's like, I can take you. And the dirty two, three, three, the triplets. And they raise their finger, and they. He create like this shadow clone. So there's like over twelve enemies and Boruto's like crap. So Boruto what he does is he starts getting outnumbered and he realizes he has no choice but to cheat. So he uses the ninja tool to create a water style just do. And through a camera, Ten Ten, I know, right? Ten Ten is watching and she heard she like narrows her eyes. She her eyes because she she knows. She I don't think she knew but she had an idea of what she knew something was up. See, even one of them said, there's no way you would create a water style ninja through that powerful while on the roof. It doesn't make sense. So, you know, they pass the second stage, and then something very interesting and a crucial part of the movie happens. So they do end up passing the second part of the exam, and, you know, Shikamaru kind of joking with Naruto. He's like, looks like our son might end up fighting. They passed the third stage. And Naruto's like, yeah, no big deal, whatever. He's just kind of sitting there acting all cool. But the second Shikamaru leaves the room, he's jumping up and down. He is so happy. He's like, yes! My son did it! He's like, yes, yes, yes. It's really nice. There were a couple of other scenes, too, in the movie. But all of these scenes hint that he's still the same guy. He just tries to act all serious, like, Oh, I'm the Hokage. I'm so bad at. He tries to act like that when he's really still the same guy that would ask a girl out on a date without having any money on him. Like, he's still the same guy that would do something like that. And he's still the same guy that would walk up to a girl and be like, 
and be, and be like, can I see your boobs? You know what I mean? He's still an idiot. He's still the same clueless idiot sometimes, which I really like. But Naruto leaves the office, and the real him goes home. And he knocks on Boruto's door, and Boruto, of course, hides the cheating gauntlet, whatever, you know, but Ninja Tool, he hides it. And he's like, what do you want? And he's like, am I talking to the real dealer or the clone? If it's a clone, get the hell out. And he's like, nope, you got the real me right now. And he walks up, and he, it, there's a very awkward silence. It's really awkward for a long time. But Naruto just, eventually, he's like, you're what, screw it. He walks up, and he puts his fist out. And he, and this is sad. This is a really, you know what you realize? That a fist bump may not mean a lot to just about anyone, but to Naruto, that means the world. You know, he fist bumped with his own father during the war. That to him is a very, you have to realize, in Naruto's mind, that's a very fatherly act. Because that was the, you know, one of the few things he did with his father. Actually, the only thing he did was fight Obito. So, and when they fist bumped during the war, that was a big moment in his life. So to him, he was doing something very fatherly. But Boruto doesn't really like Naruto, and Boruto is really, actually, I think he felt really bad. I, I actually got a little like, emotional when I saw the scene. It was so sad. Naruto just stands there, holding his hand out. Like, it's this clenched, and Boruto just sits there. The scene literally lasts like a minute of Naruto just standing there. And no music, nothing. Just stands there with his fist out. And eventually Naruto realizes what's going on. You actually see his expression, he hurt. He goes, he puts his hand on Boruto's chest, and he's like, you dig well. Good job. I'm proud. And then he's like, and he walks out of the room. But then you see Boruto is crying. You see, it quits and you see him crying. And he's like, you stupid old man. But now we're going to talk about the best part when it came to the Naruto-Boruto interaction, in my opinion. When he caught Boruto cheating and was shooting his end, stage three. So, Boruto is fighting Shikadai, the son of Shikamaru and Tamari, and he's doing well. He has all the clones doing their thing, no cheating, completely clean, until they, he gets caught in a shadow paralysis jitsu, or shadow possession jitsu. And, you know, so he freaks out, and he takes a glance up at the stage, and he wants to impress Naruto. And he decides to cheat. He activates the thing, and he creates like 30 clones. And, Shikadai is like, what the hell? Boruto gets out, he takes out Shikadai, and he, you know, he doesn't even take him out. Shikadai quits. He like, raises his hand, and you know who is cheating at the Sakura in the stadium makes a joke, this seems familiar. Sakura is quiet, her eyes are actually a little narrow, like that was the first clue, you know, but that, that we were given, that people were catching on. So I think Sakura, Sakura hadn't figured it out that he was cheating, but I don't think she knew Naruto had prohibited it yet. And you know, said it was illegal to you be those ninja tools. But, you know, it's kind of common sense. Like, you know, I, I, it's pretty obvious that we had a feeling something was up. Because it's common sense that a, a genin should not be able to do that. Especially just one that couldn't do something like that before. So Sakura was suspicious. Sakura, you could, you know, the other Kage were, gradu were talking amongst themselves. You know, we're talking about themselves and how well this boy was doing. But Naruto, Hinata looked over at Naruto and is like, what's wrong? And he's like, Hinata, and you should be off of gone and look at Boruto's wrist right now. And, you know, like, it wasn't even a request. Like, Naruto, the voice would like, do it now, this second. It was demanding. And Hinata was just like, Hinata didn't really get it, but she got it. The second she saw his wrist, she was like, oh my god. You know what I mean? And what happened is, what happened was, was that she, she told Naruto, and Naruto went down, and the other Kage hadn't realized it yet. The other Kage didn't know yet. And what happened was, you know, the other Kage were like, what the hell is he doing? Why is he down there? He should be up here with us. And, and I think it would, I think it would be, uh, it would, but Kurosuchi, it was one of the Kage's, the, the female Kage, I forgot her name, but she pointed out that, um, he probably just wants to go see his son because he's so proud. 
So, yeah, I'm a little surprised. They're Kage. They should have noticed. I guess they didn't. I guess it has to do with the fact that they didn't know about too much about Boruto as a person. So they didn't, and they didn't know what happened in the room that day. But Naruto goes down, and he just grabs for it. And he's like, Dad, did you see? Did you see? I? And he, and me, he grabbed Boruto's wrist and revealed the thing. And he doesn't even speak to Boruto. He turned around and said, and said, you cheated. That's all he said. He said, he said, disqualify Boruto Uzumaki, Shikarai Nara is the winner of the match. And then, he said, and then, and then he said, and she, Boruto was disqualified from the tuning of dance, and he grabbed Boruto's headband, and he said, oh, as a ninja as well. And, you know, up until this point, he'd been doing the right thing. Naruto had chosen all the right words. He hadn't pushed his borders at all, but then he went too far. He made his mistake. He looked at Boruto, and he said, we'll talk at home. And he, and Boruto was like, yeah. And Boruto was like, when we're at home, you mean, you mean you're a clone, right? You know. He's like, we'll talk at home. He's like, Naruto's angry. He's very mad at Boruto. And, you know, Boruto responds like, pretty much, pretty much, roughly translates to, you're never home. You never lecture me. The only reason you're lecturing me now is because what, I did something wrong in front of your, in front of the village. You're only lecturing me because the Villa can't think the Hokage is a bad father. That's pretty much what he was implying. Because he's pretty much saying, you're never home. You had no right to lecture me because you don't act like, half of the, you don't normally act like my father. So what gives you the right to be like, oh, he did something wrong. It's time to be daddy. Time to take up responsibility. No, and Boruto, in a way, is right. I actually agree with him in a certain way. No, if you're going to act like a parent, you have to do it all the time. You can't just pick and choose when to take responsibility for this. Like, Naruto was picking and choosing. He was like, okay, oh, oh, okay, uh, I, okay, my, my daughter's birthday, oh, I'll send a shadow clone to that, and I'll stay here to do paperwork. But now he's like, punish, oh, my son needs to be, need to get a lecture because he did something wrong. Real Naruto has to go do that. Shadow clone can do paperwork. It's like, yeah, Naruto, that's not how it works. I'm sorry, that really isn't how you, you know, keep a good relationship with your family. But, you know, and as I talked about, this is, and then the fight scene takes place when the, you know, Momotsuki arrives, and, you know. But since I already talked about that, I'm not going to talk about that. Next, I am going to talk about, the, you know, the, the ending of the movie. You know, what happens after Boruto wakes up and, you know, the rest of the movie, the very end, and then my overall thoughts on the movie. So, yeah. So, Boruto, after waking up and leaving the hospital and seeing his mother hurt, he realized like, what had happened. He realized the fact he had saw Naruto fight. And he realized, one, that he had asked that his chances of beating Naruto were much, much lower that they literally were zero. That there was no possibility. There, that it was impossible at the moment for him to beat Naruto. He realized that. He was like, I am, in the next 10 years, I probably won't be that strong. But, what Boruto does, is that he, should, he goes running, he has to go to Naruto's office, and see Naruto's old jacket on a chair. Sake had found it earlier, and given it back to Naruto. So, what he does is, is he puts on the jacket, he takes off his, and he puts it on, and says, he kind of makes a joke, he's like, I look so uncool, so I at least look a little cool, you know, he kind of making, like, he kind of making jokes about it. He turns around, and he sees Sasuke, and he's like, your father's been captured, you know, and he, and Boruto is, of course, like, and he's like, and he's like, and so Sasuke pretty much is like, you're, you want to come with us. Uh, it ends up, the conversation ends up leading up to him coming with them. But before that, he asked Sasuke, Why did you put up with me? Why did you let me become your student? And this is one of the best lines in the whole movie. So that, my whole theater burst out laughing. Because you're a bigger loser than Naruto. <laughs> and I was just like, I was laughing. It was hilarious. And it was a great scene. But what happened next was, 
was that acting, I love this part, I loved it to death. But what happened was, was that all the other Kage were standing behind him, all four Kage, and they were like, hey, you forget about us. And, you know, the, the next thing, this is really a time thing, or certain thing, and a character thing, like, you can't handle this many characters at once. But for some reason, um, the only, well, Sakura and Hinata and Himawari thought him off. Oh, and Serata thought him off. That, that made sense. But my real question is, okay, it was implied in the war Sakura was on Zunade's level. Zunade's a Kage. So, that so, I means Sakura a Kage level. So why, so, and where, and where, so Sakura has, so Sakura should have gone as well, because that would have been, it, it is implied Sakura a Kage level during the war. You cannot deny that. So Zune does say, you surpassed Zunade. Zunade the Hokage. I mean, you really can't argue with the statement. I mean, it, it's a fact in the manga. You can't deny that. But, and then, I, and then, for a minute I was like, where are Kakashi and Zunade? Like, they're both still alive and kicking. They're both Kage. Why aren't they there? Then I realized they're kind of old. Like, unlike Sakura, they kind of have an excuse not to go. Like, it's like, we're old. <laughs> we don't want to go. We will break our bones. Like, we will die. Like, they would get in the way. Let's be honest here. But, another thing is that, you know, Hinata's supposed to have some, like, Hinata's supposed to be incredibly powerful, according to the last. So why she didn't go, considering her husband been captured, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of other characters. I'm literally, I'm naming characters that are strong enough to help them before Kage and Sasuke. But, you know, it was just, it was plot. So what happened was the four Kage used Sake Grinagon to teleport to the place where Naruto was being held captive and where they had grown another chakra tree because they wanted to, you know, go forth with Kagoya plan or do something like Kagoya or just destroy the world or something stupid like that. They want to go like, grow another chakra fruit and become like in the invincible. But so they're draining Naruto of his power and he's like any and he's like, sorry, we ninjas don't like to make things easy. And then they all appear in the sky. Sasuke, well, the other Kage's are holding him off. Sasuke, uh, Boruto undoes the thing with a kunai, and Sasuke grabs him. Grabs him. And then, um, and then what happened was that, you know, they all started fighting. All of them were fighting. All, it, was, it was just one big battle. All the Kage were, the Kage were eventually took out, um, his minion, his, like, sidekick. Kin Nikki, I think it was, something like that. He took they took him out. But then what happened was the other guy no they stealed him and then the other guy and then this guy like I don't even know, he like absorbed him. As they were fighting, he like absorbed him and, you know, became this like all powerful being and took everybody out. Naruto was hiding this whole time, by the way. <laughs> but no. So then Naruto and Sake just slowly walk up. And, you know, they, and, and they, in the same position they had during the war, practically the same angle and everything. And, and they were pretty, and Naruto was just like, hey, Sasuke, you ready? And he was like, of course, loser. And then Naruto and Sasuke decided it was time that they fought seriously. So Naruto and Sasuke rush in, and they're dominating him. Like, their teamwork together is amazing, and they're... And they're doing an amazing, it's an amazing scene. Arguably, when it comes to just the fight scene quality and animation, best scene in the movie, best fight of the whole movie. Not probably the best scene of the movie, but def or most powerful, but definitely the most awesome. Uh, definitely the scene, almost, almost every part of that scene, my movie theater was cheering, was either cheering or dead silence, because they couldn't think about how awesome it was. But... It was an amazing, amazing scene, and there isn't really much for me to say about it, besides for all the animation in it was perfect. There was not one bad animated scene in that entire fight. You know, Sake gets like, I'm actually I'm going to actually do a video, uh, eventually on who is stronger, end of theory, Naruto or Sake, using evidence from Naruto the movie, the last, 
and Naruto Gaiden. You know who is stronger? Actually, probably. I think you know. What? I take that back. I'll, I'm only gonna use evidence from Gaiden and um, Baruto because the the last take place like three or four years before it, so that time gap could actually mean something pretty significant. I mean, in Naruto, time skips are like are almost at the same level of growth as Dragon Ball. I mean, look at Sakura. Was it able to do? What bit was it even able to go toe to toe with a tuning pre time skip and post and right literally right after the time skip in the first arc she took out a member of the Akashi. I'm like, okay, Naruto character get insanely strong in insane amount of time. Like because Sakura by according to that logic, Sakura is got, got became in two years in a little in like three years. Became strong enough to to defeat Naruto pre time get Naruto and Sasuke at full power without even breaking a sweat because the Akatsuki are all of the group composed of all S ranked ninjas, right? S ranked S ranked threat level ninjas. I mean, so time get to Naruto can mean a lot, but. You know, but the fight did give me the feeling that Sasuke may be stronger. Now, I don't want to say that, because I like Naruto, but I think Sasuke may be stronger. But as I've been saying, I'm making going to do a video eventually on it. So, you know, just wait for that video. And then in that video, I will go in-depth over who is stronger, Naruto or Sasuke. But now, I talked about how great Naruto, versus, Naruto and Sasuke versus this guy was. You know what? Let's talk about how we're going to end this movie. And how it ended and my thoughts on the movie as a whole. So, Sasuke revealed that earlier when he was training with Boruto, when Boruto formed a very small Rasengan and threw it, it had created a chakra nature that like had like a delayed impact. And you see, the problem with uh, this guy, with a, you know, Momoshiki, was that he was absorbing all ninjutsu. So you couldn't, so even in Minaro and Sasuke versus Momoshiki fight, all they knew was Taijitsu. But, so, they needed a way to do it. And because Boruto uh, Rasengan, when he throws it, had a delayed reaction, Sake was like, I have an idea. So, he, Sake went over to Boruto. He was like, Boruto, you need to hit him with a Rasengan. And Boruto was like, what now? Like, I'm not fighting this guy. I don't want to die. And Naruto was like, come over here. And Naruto put his hand under Boruto's. And they formed a massive Rasengan. One of Naruto's biggest Rasengan, probably in the whole series. Probably next to, I don't know. I don't even know what that would be next to. Maybe, maybe some of maybe like it, it was like, it was like tail beef bomb, like small tail beef bomb size. But, so he gave it to Boruto, and Sake rushed, and Sake got in front of him and created an opening. You know, he held him off with his Taijutsu and created an opening. Boruto jumped in front with a Rasteng with a gigantic Rasengan and he threw it at and he threw and he hit the guy with it and the guy fired a tail beef on. The attack collided collided and Boruto was pushing forward, but while he was pushing his entire arm got really burned up and he pushed forward and you know. He managed to blow it back. But um what happened was so he managed to, you know, win the struggle and he won. And they defeated Momochiki. Now, that's really, a, that's a quick summary of the fight. And you know, it was an amazing fight. But you know what I need to talk about now? My overall thoughts on the movie, just, you know. And, you know, I may talk a little bit about, about things that I felt like they were less unanswered. You know, just a little bit of a discussion, I guess, at the end. But yeah. So let's start on that. Now, at the very end of the movie, we see... You know, their whole family kind of hanging out. We see Naruto and uh, Boruto are eating at the table, the real Naruto. And we see the relationship is different. It got him better. Because Boruto even looks at Naruto and he's like, Hey, hey, Dad, did, don't you have to get going? And Naruto's like, Oh, crap, I do have to go. Shikamaru's going to be pissed. And, you know, Boruto's like, Well, I have a mission. And he runs out. And uh, so Naruto asks him, like, So what, you got a mission? He's like, Yeah. He's, he's like, Have a good day. And they... Bump, and they reach out and they bump fit. They do a fist bump. But this scene is amazing. And you see that Boruto's hand that was damaged in the fight. Had 
which had the same revenges the same way Naruto was. Actually, I believe, I actually have a theory that, actually, it revenges so similarly, similarly, that I would go as far as to say either Sakura or Zernade had to have done it themselves, just because, you know, it was probably either Sakura or Zernade who banded the prosthetic arm. Because even the way it was, it was, it was like a style. It was like the exact same style and everything. It also could be an art thing, but it was definitely intended. But, also, the four they had left out, he not to have tried to get, you know, he not to have been fixing Boruto's jacket. And Boruto had told her, no, mom, don't fix it. And he looked, and he, and she was, and of course, you know, you, you're the hole in your jacket, and you're telling your mother not to fix it, so she kind of looked at him like, um, okay, and he's like, it looks better this way, it looks more cool, and, you know, that made everybody happy, but he had, he was referring to how Naruto's jacket was very damaged and old, but yeah, so the movie ends with them fifth bumping, well, that's not, not the last thing, you all, you see like a picture of that, of Naruto, Boruto and all the Kage's, that was a nice touch. You also see this really weird, this, 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 this scene, I see, I guess this scene is supposed to say something like, Sasuke doesn't leave anymore because the Kagoya thread is gone, you see Sakura and Sasuke just sitting on a rooftop for no fair reason. They just happen to be sitting on a rooftop, like, what are those, like, like what are those ending cliches when two characters just happen to be in, in the perfect setting? For the final scene of those two characters to be. I was just like, okay. I was like, they just happened to be sitting there. But, yeah. So now I'm just going to quickly talk about my overall thoughts on the movie. And things that I liked. And things that I didn't. Now after the movie as a whole. The comedy was great. The animation was great. The art was great. All was, Everything was perfect. Besides for a couple of things. That I did not like. One, I don't feel think they knew Tarada as much as they could. And honestly, I expected, um... I guess I expected her to be a little bit more powerful. And while I do think if Kishimoto ever continued the theory, she would be much, much more powerful. The real problem is that when you really think about it, Tarada's, um... You know, Serata hasn't had any training in the shotting on. I feel like that is maybe the reason she's a, we a lot weaker than I thought. I mean, I thought, I mean, I always thought she may not be able to master. I do think she could master Shidori, but then again, who could have teach her? Like, but, like, super old Kakashi that doesn't even really do anything anymore? Kakashi can't even perform a proper Shidori without his shotting gun. Sake not really around too much, and obviously doesn't have time for his own daughter. Also, I I had there have been fan fan speculation that you know that Naruto and Sake would turn it into some kind of competition, which I felt like would have been a lot cooler. Like you know, if Naruto had started trading Serata at the end of the, at the end, like you know, and it had you know it had been like in an ending with Naruto and Sake can, competing through their own students. That were actually each other's children. I felt like that would have been uh, really cool, but they didn't do that. Also, um, you know, the thing when uh, Dick was Dick was just Dick was just not maybe when everybody saw the raw trailer when Sakura and Sarada, you know, when Sakura and Sarada were talking and when they saw Sakura blood, they were everybody was just like, oh my god, because you remember Sakura had promised Sarada and guided. You know, she had asked something, oh, what's better than kissing? Not quite exactly what she asked, in the, at least in the translation I read. And Sakura was like, I'll tell you when you're older. So some people were like, this is going to be hilarious. People really thought, Kiki, oh, we're going to have talk. We're going to have talk. We're going to show the beginning of talk. We're getting thrown out of, like, the talk. And it was going to be really funny. Or it was going to be one of those things when, you know, she, or it was going to be like a one minute thing where she just like, um, look over there. A bird, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, you know there, there was comedic possibilities. It was still a funny thing. But it felt like funny but awkward at the same time. It was like, you know, why did you... like? The real question is, why is Dorada thinking like that? Like, why is she thinking about her mother's death life? It's weird. 
Like, you know, it was obvious what she was implying, and you're kind of just thinking, why is she thinking about that? Like, dude, that, that, these are your parents. They're weird. Electronic. Weird. But, you know, I also didn't like that she, that she seemed completely fine with her father. That had, it just seemed out of character, or at least different from what we had seen in Gaiden. Because in Gaiden, Dorado, the Dorado that I saw was like obsessed with Sasuke. Was like she wanted got time with her father. And so that so it seems out of character based on that because based on that, shouldn't she have been like, No, 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 you can't trade him. You need to spend time with me. I am your child. I thought that was a little odd. The whole movie I was thinking and she completely fine with her father that had been away for her her entire childhood training for the seventh Hokage son instead of her. Okay, whatever. I mean, I, I mean, I guess she probably doesn't care anymore. She probably needs to stock her training her at this point. I mean, she probably accepted, she probably accepted the fact near, a couple of years ago that, you know, my dad's never going to train me. My mom's strong. Who cares at this point? You know what I mean? Like, it's not like Sakura is a civilian. It's, you know, it, I feel like that situation would definitely have been different if Sakura was a freaking civilian. That would have been different. She would have been like, you will train me. Actually, she probably wouldn't be a ninja if Sakura was a civilian. That's actually a good what if. That's actually a little bit of a good discussion. But besides, that's besides the point. The point is that mo moving on from anything with Dorada, I did not like what they did with Mitsuki. I'm sorry. I hated it. The fact that they had the nerve to put the Arushi Maru scene after the credits in the end, it's like, dude, it's like Kishimoto, really? It's like, this is the last piece of Naruto material, and you tease us like that at the end? Like, you tease us? That you, you give us? It's like, dude, you could have made the whole movie about that, and people would have wa wanted to see it. Like, that would, like, people loved it. Even at the end of the movie, I, uh, people were in the movie theater just stopped. Like, the second they saw that, everybody was, like, getting their drinks ready. They all just stopped and stared at the screen, like, what? But you know, it, it was a lot of garbage. It really was. I hated that. And they, it was hilarious, the scene, don't get me wrong. The thing was funny, especially especially Serata, because as we know, when Gaiden and Serata saw Arushimaru, so one of my favorite lines in the entire movie is, wait, Aruki Maru, is he your dad or your mom? And he's like, and I forgot what his response was. It was like, does it matter? Or I don't know, or something like that. It was something really weird. Or I think it was like neither or something. It was odd. But what happened was, was that Boruto had no idea what they were talking about. I found that I, I'm just going on me something that he's an idiot, but he, it was just because maybe he didn't pay attention like Naruto didn't. Like, he it was selective, like, he was like, okay, this isn't important, I'll pay attention, this isn't important to me, so I won't pay attention. That is my hopeful assumption. Otherwise, there's something wrong with the educational system here. But then again, they are, they're already altering events. When you really think about it, because Doc has not been giving any credit for helping end the war. So, technically, you're lying about that. But, let's just quickly talk about one last thing. Alright, and that is just the fact that this is it. Okay, now, this is it, but at the same time, it isn't. Because, okay, this is the, I'm actually, I'm, I'm pro I have a couple Naruto videos I plan on making, but I want to probably bring up that it's really an iffy situation if we want Pariot to continue the anime post this movie. Like, if we want them to go, like, the Dragon Ball Super route and maybe redo the movie, I don't... I don't know if I want that, because the movie's so good. I want, I really want them to just be like, take place after Boruto the movie, maybe they'll do, like, after but you know, after all that, after Bernardo for the stock guys, fight, they'll skip right until after the movie, and we'll get new content, but it will be only, you know, Kishimoto will get them complete right away. I hope he doesn't do that, because 
that's just another Dragon Ball GT waiting to happen. Nobody wants another Dragon Ball GT. Dragon Ball Z was garbage. If you're what if one of my subscribers happens to be or or actually anybody, one of my viewers here happens to be one of the few GT fans there are, bring it on. I I will openly say it. I hate I hate GT with a passion. It does not make any sense. It's stupid. It's a really bad theory. And and I hate it when people say it canon, but that's a whole nother video, but I don't want that happening to Naruto. Like, I believe what they should do is they should. I'm gonna have to go do an in depth video, but what they could do is they could continue to be anime, but if they ever want to do anything big, like interview something stronger than Naruto and Sasuke at the end of the war, interviews like give that a, a power more greater than that to Naruto and Sasuke, I feel like they should have to go to. It, it should be like a contract where. If you want to go past that level of power and do anything like more more than that, you need to talk to me. Like can you know, you need to get my permission to make sure it's not too out there and it makes sense. Like, you know, Dick Way Kitchen Mode is not even need to write anything. All he needs to do do is just sit there on the phone and they're like and then this and then Naruto and Sake will be able to destroy galaxies and then the kid the Moto can be like, No, I don't want that. There's a reason I don't I didn't make them galaxy busters. No, don't do it, goodbye. But if you wanna make it continent buster like tr a multi continent buster, go ahead, I don't care. But you could easily do that. But yeah, so you know, besides that, there really isn't anything else I can think of. So you know what? I hope you guys enjoyed this incredibly, incredibly long video on my thoughts on Boruto, the movie. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice day, guys. Peace.